Earth or the GLS is the ground launch sequencer. We have computer programs and uh, software that helps us actually execute all of the different uh, physical steps of uh, closing the valves and, and different uh, types of uh, procedures that have to happen very quickly right at the time of launch. And so to keep all that happening, uh, we do have a ground launch sequencer and we have folks that, uh, that monitor that and make sure that's all executing properly. Back on the flight deck, watching uh, pilot Tony Antonelli. And you can see what he's doing there is he actually, you can see some different books. Uh, they have these books that they take with them. We call it flight data file. And uh, these are our procedures. Uh, and we have all different various procedures, again, in case of any type of emergency. We can uh, switch to a different procedure and uh, safely get the uh, orbiter back to the ground. And you'll notice that uh, pilot Tony Antonelli also has uh, gloves and his helmet on now. So that is all part of that entire pressure suit that uh, we can then close the entire suit and pressurize that. Uh, it also makes it a bit challenging, though, for actually uh, flying tasks. And if he needs to flip switches and stuff, uh, we have to do it very carefully and deliberately with these, with these gloves on. Uh, there's an actual uh, tube that goes into the, the shuttle, pumping air in. Yes, that's correct. Uh, while we're on the ground here. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. MS-1's aboard. MS-1 at 2046. Back to the uh, picture here from the white room. Uh, to the far left of the picture is a uh, yellow tube type of thing, and that's just a, a big air vent that we have that uh, we can drag that in through the hatch to make sure we have good air flowing around inside the, the orbiter uh, while we're putting the crew in there. But you will see us actually remove that uh, before we close the hatch. NTD, PLT, Comcheck. Uh, PLT, this is NTD. I've got you loud and clear. Good afternoon, Tony. Loud and clear. Good afternoon, Steve. Yeah, good afternoon. PLT, Comcheck. PLT, Houston, I read you loud and clear. Good afternoon, Tony. Those were our con checks being completed by pilot Tony Antonelli uh, here and also in Houston. That's correct. And now we have a view back to the white room where we see mission specialist uh, Steve Swanson, otherwise known as Swanee. He will be the uh, last crew member to enter the orbiter. And he'll be sitting on the flight deck in the Mission Specialist 2 position. And from there, he'll be able to uh, function as the flight engineer. We'll have a good view 
of the displays in front of both the commander and the pilot. And the responsibilities of a flight engineer include what, Kay? Uh, primarily, he'll be backing up the commander and the pilot, helping them monitor all the displays, the performance of the entire space shuttle as it climbs to orbit. And this is a little different view. As we see that uh, astronaut support personnel, uh, Ken Ham, has repositioned the small camera that we have in the flight deck. It is now actually, if you will, up on the dashboard, looking back. So um, that would actually be looking down towards the ground or towards the base of the pad in this particular orientation. Towards the top of your view, what you're seeing is uh, the left shoulder of pilot Tony Antonelli and looking back down towards uh, where Steve Swanson will be strapped in. A little bit out of view right now is Joe Acaba being strapped in. And looks like we just got the uh, mid-deck strapping camera view. And it's a little dark, as, I, as we mentioned. It's kind of dark in there, but uh, we've got enough light to see what we need to uh, on board. But uh, we have the uh, mission specialists that are flying on the mid-deck are strapped in. You can see the glow sticks that they put in out in the white room. It's slightly dark in there. It's uh, surprising how much light they actually put out. It's not a large amount, but just enough to, uh, to help with visibility. Again, with this vertical orientation, the left side of this image is actually the ceiling of the mid-deck. Since we're watching the crew get strapped in to Space Shuttle Discovery, I'll ask another question from Aaron uh, from Chino Hills. With all the information about the crew's daily schedules and going on available on NASA.gov, especially the ISS commentary coverage and the continuous coverage during a shuttle mission, have crews ever felt uncomfortable about the number of people following their daily lives? Well, you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, I don't think that the crews really know how many people or following their daily lives. Uh, we get so focused on uh, the mission at hand, and uh, a lot of times they uh, aren't so necessarily even aware of the cameras that are there. Um, certainly they don't really, I don't think, have time to check all the different websites to even see how many uh, details are being put out there. But uh, I think that's a surprising thing. They usually learn after their flight when people will tell them, hey, we followed every detail of your flight, uh, even what food you're eating or that, things like that. It's, it's a little bit surprising after the fact. Uh, so luckily I don't think it's anything that adds stress to them at this point. Okay, you actually on uh, STS-90 were strapped into uh, your chair there in uh, your shuttle. And um, so what goes through your mind as you're waiting and for everyone to get strapped in and for the launch to take place? Well, the crew members are going to be strapped in and, and in that position for quite a while, so you just get to a point where you try to just relax. Uh, even as the crew members are being strapped in, we ask them to, to basically go a little bit limp and to allow the closeout crew to kind of position them properly in the seat and uh, really get their straps tight because there's so much vibration uh, during, the, during the ascent that we want to make sure they're very securely attached to their seat. So, uh, just kind of relax and try to just take it easy for a while. There'll be plenty of time to get uh, um, keyed back up a little bit uh, later on. So um, 
definitely just in a mode of uh, taking it easy and and maybe just kind of reviewing in your head what uh, what your next steps will be as it approaches uh, the launch itself. 